So I invite uh, my broadband to present. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Council. And uh, maybe I must just say uh, right at the start that I represent the views of consumers here um, as related to my, cons my consumers uh, on my broadband, on the, my broadband forums. I think Sumaya has previously explained exactly uh, from what background we come. Obviously, I report as well on these matters, and I can guarantee the other parties that I will report um, objectively as a journalist. These are not my views or even the views of my broadband. It's the views of consumers. Um, and so maybe this is also, I must just tell the ICASA uh, councillors here and the rest of the panel that this is most probably the last legal thing that I will say in my presentation. Uh, by my dress sense and my humble salary, I think you will know that I'm not a lawyer or an ICASA councillor for that matter. Um, uh, I am simply a guy that's going to give you the views and give it to you exactly like, like uh, people say. So expect honest and open opinions uh, in this short presentation. Now firstly, I think we must th thank ICASA for showing some teeth in these hearings. Um, this is maybe the first time that I've seen um, ICASA taking a strong stance on these matters. And it's also, the council is very well prepared, in-depth questions, so congratulations on what you've done so far. And we urge you to continue down the same path, um, to create a more competitive broadband environment. ICASA and uh, consumers really should work hand in hand on all of these regulations. Um, so it's great to have a voice, at least, at these hearings. Um, I think we all, and not only ICASA, also government and the Department of Communications, have exactly the same aims as consumers. We want cheaper broadband, we want better broadband, we want better broadband penetration in the country, and what we, want, we want people to have access to the internet. Consumers ask for nothing else. So we really have the same aims, so we urge ICASA to keep this in mind um, during the regulatory process. And then we move to what consumers say. Now, in the first slide, um, or in the fir first quote, and these quotes have taken, were just taken from consumers, it says, clever yet sneaky telecom lawyers. They get paid purely for one thing, stall tactics. Now, I'm sure if the words, and you can see consumers are objective by congratulating the lawyers, because I'm sure when clever and sneaky is used in the same sentence when it comes to a lawyer, there's an immediate raise. So, um, but I think we should, however, keep in mind that what we have seen from Telcom yesterday is simply that they want to stall or even stop this process. Um, it's unnecessary. We know local loop unbundling can help um, to achieve the aims of government, the aims of consumers. So there's simply no uh, reason to to pay much uh, attention to that. Then the next quote is, Telcom wants to play victim. It costs them to show some balls. And there I ask you again, as I, I promise you it will be straight, and this is how consumers uh, tell it, but please take this in mind that show strength and make this happen. And I've seen yesterday that Telcom said they have some grave concerns as well, and I can say my broadband has some grave concerns. We have a concern that nothing concrete will happen that will benefit consumers before, in, in 2011. <coughs> we have a concern that all of this will result in either legal cases, God forbid, or in other forms of fights, and that consumers will not see the benefit of whatever has transpired here. ICASA has put a tremendous amount of work into this. Government has urged people to take local loop and bundling seriously and make this happen. So there's a lot of energy behind this. But we have a concern that, like with the ADSL regulations, that this whole process, when it comes to an end in November 2011, consumers will say, what have we seen? Small businesses will say, what have we seen? So please make sure that consumers and businesses will see something from local loop unbundling 
um, by 2011, by the end of 2011. And then I urge all stakeholders, and here I include Telcom, that give consumers something, whatever it is. You will see there are many options. There's full local loop unbundling, but there's also naked ADSL. There's line sharing, very important. There's bitstream access, where Telcom has a product already. There's lots that can be done by all parties involved to make sure that we see something concrete before the end of the year. Now here I ask of Telcom, please come to the party. I understand that you want to fight this. this. You are scared. You are scared that you lose millions or even billions in revenue. But there are things that you can do that is part of this whole local loop unbundling process to work with ICASA and to work with other companies that presented here to say let's, let's find something that we can at least in 2011 show some progress with, this, uh, with local loop unbundling. As I mentioned, Bitstream Access and Naked ADSL are but two examples that can be implemented quite quickly. And then to the mobile operators, we've seen you begging for local loop unbundling. You said it must happen and Telcom will, you've actually shown how Telcom will benefit from local loop unbundling. But when it comes to your wireless local loop, the world will end if that happens. So I can tell you, take a leaf out of Telcom's book and say that this competition that you will create with a better wholesale product will not be the end of the world. In fact, it can benefit you. Telcom has shown by the IP Connect product, which people explained as a crippled product, with the IP Connect product, a lot of innovation has happened. In fact, we've seen, un uh, we've seen uncapped ADSL launched by MWeb affordably. And within months after Telcom themselves said it is unfeasible, you cannot do it, they've launched their own uncapped ADSL product. So they, people can show you how it is done. So create an affordable wholesale product. Not a wholesale product that's priced above retail prices. Last time I checked, that's not wholesale. Um, so create a, a proper wholesale product for service providers to start to create innovation on your networks. It can be done um, and it has been done. So an urge, not, it's not only focused at Telcom, it's certainly focused at the mobile providers as well, it can help this country. So I hand over to Sumaya now that, uh, that will handle some other aspects. At the beginning of their presentation yesterday, Telcom made the statement that there had been claims made that local loop and bundling would be to the benefit of consumers, but that was not the case. Um, as far as we can tell, at no point did they elaborate on that, and we would actually like them to do so, because we're of the view that it will be to the benefit of the consumer. Just to end our presentation, we'd like to end with something that was written on the forums yesterday following the local loop unbundling hearings. This is a forum member, and we're reading it exactly as, as he's posted it. Personally, I think the pro local process has gone off on so many tangents and has been, and has been so corrupted that it's lost focus of the original intent of local loop unbundling. The basic moral premise of 4LU is that the copper network in any country was grown organically over decades, actually from the time of Alexander Graham Bell, to a scale and reach that is practically and economically unfeasible to le replicate with any technology. Thus, no private or even public organization has the resources or motive to build another wired network which can come close to matching it making it unique and irreplaceable for the foreseeable future. For me, the question before the regulator is, would it be in the best interest of the citizens and the economy of the country to leave this unique national asset in the hands of a single organization fortunate enough to inherit it during the privatization process? Would it be beneficial for the single organization to continue dictating the terms and pricing in an unfettered manner for the sole purpose of enriching their shareholders? That's directly from the consumer out there. And with that, we thank you for the opportunity for this right of reply and ask if you have any questions. Do you have any questions from the floor? I have one light-hearted one here from Paul Hill from the RC Channel address to Rudolph. And it says, why didn't anyone tell the presenters it's International Suit Day? As, well as I've mentioned, unfortunately, I don't get a legal salary, so uh, <laughs> it's, uh... 
Honourable Ben, thank you very much. Oh, this is not here.